गुड मॉर्निंग एंड नमस्कार वेलकम टू सी सी गुरुकुल लेक्चर्स आई एम डॉक्टर कुमार शांतनु फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बॉटनी देशबंधु कॉलेज टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस एंड सी वेरियस मॉर्फोलॉजिकल एनाटोमिकल एंड रिप्रोडक्टिव आस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ वन ऑफ अ यूनिक ब्रायोफाइट व्हिच इज नेम्ड एज फिनेरिया इन आवर प्रीवियस लेक्चर्स we have discussed how land plants evolved from its aquatic ancestors we have also understood various adaptations which has taken place for the successful venture of these land plants onto a terrestrial habitat amongst the most primitive land plants bryophyte is a group which is comprised or which can be categorized into or subdivided into three smaller subgroups that is liverworts hornworts and mosses till now we have seen the representative genera each from liverwort hornwort that is markensia dicksia and from hornworts anthocyros today we are going to see one of the representative genus of mosses that is finaria the subclass mosses or the subclass uh, brydi includes approximately 14000 species and 650 genera which comprises of highly specialized group of bryophytes these subclass brydi are characterized by various features such as filamentous protonema for the first time we will see filamentous protonema in bryophytes leaves with distinct midrib endothecial origin of archisporium columella is not overarched presence of trabeculae and seta in the capsule and uh, the overall structure of capsule is very complex and these features make the true mosses the examples of subclass brydi are fenaria polytrichum pogonatum etc the order fenariales consists of annual terrestrial plants with terminal rosettes of leaves the leaves are sessile and broad at the base they are broad one cell thick except at the midrib the capsule is pear shaped and is born on long tubsticeta from which its type genus finaria derives its name funes the word funes in latin means rope it was used by schreber in way back in 1791 to relate the characteristic twisting of the seta when dry to a rope in finaria the capsule bears an inner endostome and an outer exostome ring of 16 peristome teeth each and the calyptra has a long slender beak let us discuss the systematic position of finaria finaria belongs to division bryophyta class bryopsida subclass brydi order finariales and family finariaceae as far as the habitat and distribution of finaria is concerned it is the largest genus of a uh, family finariaceae which prefers alkaline soils for its growth and development it is usually found as a small to medium sized yellowish greenish plant in dense patches in moist shady soils tree trunks rocks and sometimes over burnt sites finaria hygrometrica has a cosmopolitan distribution and it is found extensively from tropics to the arctic in the diagram you can very well see these uh, uh, dots they represent the occurrence or the locality from where finaria is very frequently uh, reported so we can see that it is found in the tropical region also subtropical and also from the arctic region as well so it has a cosmopolitan distribution in terms of its uh, occurrence finaria is also known as bonfire or post fire species as 
it is the characteristic bryophyte which appears during the recolonization at the burn site that are rich in ash and nutrient contents especially nitrogen and phosphorus. The genus Phineria includes about 117 species with 18 species represented in India. Let us talk about the morphology of Phineria gametophyte. The gametophyte of Phineria is small sized. The stem has been referred as cowloid and the leaf is referred as phylloid way back by Koch in 1956. The gametophyte consists of two distinct growth stages. The first stage is the juvenile stage which is represented by prostrate filamentous protonema. The juvenile protonema is transient vegetative structure. The fully grown protonema resembles algal growth. It consists of freely branched green filaments which are also known as chloronimal branches. They form a bright green matte like coating on the moist soil. The cells of green filaments are separated by cross walls and contain many discoid chloroplasts. The rhizoidal branches and their cells lack chloroplast and are separated by oblique septa between them. So, you can very well see in this diagram that from these protonema there are certain branches which grow downwards also termed as rhizoidal branches. In rhizoidal branches we can see oblique septum. During development several lateral buds develop on protonema. Each lateral bud develops into a leafy shoot which remains attached to the substratum by rhizoid at its base. Here we can see the emergence of certain bud like structures. These bud like structures will eventually develop into a leafy shoot. These leafy shoot will remain attached to the substratum and from this lower portion the rhizoids will come down and this will provide anchorage to the whole gametophyte. The second part of the morphology is an upright leafy gametophore. The protonema degenerates and the young moss plant consists of only erect leafy shoot. These erect leafy shoots they are 1 to 3 centimeter in height and they represent gametophyte. Each gametophyte may be unbranched or they might show some monopod monopodial branchings. The branches arise from below a leaf. The central axis of moss plant is called as stem and it grows with the help of an apical cell with three cutting faces. These apical cells are meristematic in nature and they divide through these three cutting faces to give rise to the structures of leaf and stem and lateral branches. This stem bears lateral leaves which are more crowded and larger near the apex than the base. The leaves in Phineria are ovate in outline, sessile broad at the base. The sessile leaves show entire margin that means there is no indentation or there is no discontinuity of the margin and the apex of each leaf is pointed. The cells are chlorophyllous and thus these leaves are the principal photosynthetic organs of Phineria gametophyte. The leaves of Phineria are inserted spirally initially in the three vertical rows, but later on as the gametophyte matures these vertical rows they change into a spiral arrangement and this spiral arrangement is sometimes also termed as 3 by 8 phyllotexy. Now, let us understand what is the meaning of 3 by 8 phyllotexy. 3 by 8 phyllotexy means 8 such leaves 
will be arranged spirally in three complete circles. It looks like a spiral staircase if you could imagine. The prostrate branches and the lower region of the upright branches they usually bear colorless scale lively scale like leaves. The leaves surrounding the terminal sex organs are called as perichial leaves and they are the largest of all the leaves. They can be distinguished by their color, size and shape from the foliage leaves present on the lower region of the stem. You can very well see in this diagram that the sex organs that is archegonia or enthridia they are surrounded by gametophytic leaves at the apex of sexual branches. These crowded densely arranged large sized leaves are termed as perichial leaves. Numerous multicellular slender branched rhizoids arise from the basal part of the stem. These rhizoids penetrate the substratum approximately equal to the height of erect shoot. This approximate equal penetration by rhizoid gives them enough anchorage and support to the up erect gametophyte. The rhizoid system of the moss plant is very elaborate and they are connected with each other. The rhizoids arising near the base of the stem are brown, stout and almost cable like forming the main anchoring system. These rhizoids descend almost vertically downwards from the stem for almost 2 centimeters approximately the height of the shoot. From each of these rhizoids arise irregularly branched lateral or secondary rhizoids. These secondary rhizoids are of fine diameter which are colorless and thin. Secondary rhizoids they enhance or increase the surface area for further absorption of water and also enhance the anchorage function of rhizoids. The rhizoids further branch, the secondary rhizoids also branch to form tertiary rhizoids and still finer diameter and are of comparable to root hairs. So, we can see that the rhizoidal system in Finaria is very elaborate and they are branched to uh, a level of secondary rhizoids, tertiary rhizoids and furthermore branching could happen. The cells of rhizoids are separated by oblique septa. You can see in the diagram there you could very well see there are multiple oblique septa in the cells of primary or secondary rhizoids. These rhizoids are colorless in young stage, but they do become red or brown at maturity owing to the deposition of some kind of pigments in them. The rhizoids usually contain oil droplets and become green by developing chlorophyll when exposed to light. This also uh, tells us the, uh, the potential of each of these cells to give rise to a new plant. The gametophytes of a moss plant resembles a small flowering plant with leaves, stem and rhizoids. When we talk about the anatomy of Phenaria, we will discuss the anatomy by discussing the anatomy of stem, the anatomy of leaf. So, in a cross section of the stem, the Phenaria shows that it is divided into three distinct regions. The outermost epidermis, the uh, middle one cortex and the central cylinder. The outermost layer of stem known as epidermis is composed of a single layer of tangentially elongated cells. These cells bear chloroplast in the younger regions of the stem. 
in mature stem epidermal cells lack chloroplast and become thick walled as far as the stomata or pores are concerned they are absent from the stem of phenaria inner to the epidermis is cortex that surrounds the central cylinder the cortex is composed of large thin walled parenchymal cells of relatively greater thickness in the young stems the cells of cortex contain chloroplasts in the mature stem the cortex is divided into two regions the outer thick walled cells next to the epidermis and the inner thin walled cells surrounding the cylinder you can very well see a cross section of the gametophyte shoot in this you can observe the peripheral region of cortex which usually contains leaf traces which end in the cortex and do not join the central conducting strand the central conducting cylinder is not divided into xylem and phloem it is made up of vertically elongated narrow thin walled colorless cells lacking protoplasm these dead cells are called hydroids hydroids help in upward movement of water and solutes and also provide mechanical support to an, to a certain extent when we talk about leaves the young leaf has a very simple structure consisting of a single layer of large thin walled parenchymal cells these parenchymal cells are rich in chloroplasts which are very prominent they these chloroplasts are large and can divide even after the leaves have attained maturity here in this diagram you can see the outline of a leaf of phenaria and individual cell they have multiple large very prominent chloroplasts these chloroplasts have ability and sometimes they keep on multiplying even the leaf attains its complete maturity a mature leaf shows a midrib in the center and one cell wing on either side the midrib is several cells thick it consists of an upper and lower epidermis below the epidermis there are certain elongated large and thin walled cells and in the center of this midrib are certain conducting cells these thin walled cells are followed by thick walled cells stomata are not found on the leaf of phenaria also because the wings are one cell thick so the purpose of uh, gaseous exchange or absorption or availability of water can be fulfilled by these single cells through its surfaces so there is no special requirement of a stomatal structure which we have seen uh, in case of marchensia in case of anthocerous also though they were quite primitive they are considered quite primitive to phenaria now let us talk about reproduction in phenaria reproduction in phenaria can take place through vegetative mode also and through sexual mode also when we talk about vegetative reproduction in phenaria it can take place uh, the leafy gametophores of phenaria can propagate vegetative uh, vegetatively with the help of uh, protonema fragmentation for example uh, the first and the most common mode is multiplication of primary protonema by fragmentation in this case sometimes primary protonema breaks into small fragments accidentally or by death of some cells in between these uh, protonema detach and these detached fragments consisting of either several cells or a single green cell even develop into a new protonema the secondary protonema sometimes also may be formed by methods other than uh, the germination of spores such as detached uh, cells of the leaf stem or rhizoids 
under favorable uh, conditions of moisture. So, even some portions of uh, some other portions of the gametophyte such as uh, detached leaf or some accidentally broken leaf, uh, some detached stem they can give rise to protonemal structures. These protonemal structures are called as secondary protonema. Uh, you can see here in the diagram there are certain uh, protonema which could arise from the shoots or from the leaf termed as secondary protonema and from these protonema a new gametophyte can be uh, uh, can arise out. From this secondary protonema leafy gametophytes are formed in an essentially similar manner to primary protonema. The rhizoids of a leafy gametophyte may come up the sub, uh, come up to the substratum and get exposed to light under moist conditions. These rhizoids then turn green to produce leafy gametophytes or leafy, uh, leafy gametophore in the same manner as in a primary protonema. There are certain reported cases of gemma also in case of phenaria. During favorable conditions, small bud like structures called gemma are formed from terminal cells of the protonema by transverse longitudinal or oblique divisions. These multicellular bodies consists of thin walled cells that contain numerous chloroplasts. These bodies eventually detach to produce protonema on the return of favorable conditions. Way back in 1941, Berkeley observed gamma for the first time in Phenaria hygrometrica. Gamma are also formed on the leaves and stems of gametophyte during favorable conditions and they have the ability to develop into leafy gametophore under favorable conditions. The last but not least the vegetative structure uh, bulbils are also formed which help in the propagation of phenaria gametophyte. These are small structures develop on rhizoids and lack chloroplasts. During favorable conditions these bulbil develop into new protonema which in turn will form the leafy gametophyte. And apospory is also uh, one of the common methods of vegetative reproduction in phenaria. The production of gametophytes directly from the vegetative cells of the sporophyte without the formation of spore is called as apospory. Chlorophyllous protonemal filaments sometimes arise from the unspecialized cells of the different parts of the sporophytes. So, these are four or five different uh, methods of uh, vegetative reproduction which we can see in Phenaria. In our uh, coming lectures, we will start with the, the sexual reproduction mode and also we will discuss the sporophyte and its internal structure in case of Phenaria. Thank you so much.